and there's actually a very surprisingly tight uh, Senate race going on right now in South Carolina. So Lindsey Graham, the despicable Lindsey Graham, I'm sure everybody has a million stories about the horrifying things they've heard him say or support. But he's been a senator of South Carolina since 2004. But for the first time, he's apparently being challenged relatively seriously. The polls still show him leading his Democrat challenger, but it's never been this close. And the reason perhaps why it's so close or why this story is interesting is that his opponent, who goes by the na whose name is Jamie Harrison, has broken all fundraising records when it comes to Senate races. So previously it was held, I'll just read a little quote here. He has raised $57 million for, the, for this last quarter. So just this last quarter, that's how much he's raised. So for the third quarter of this year, he's raised $57 million. So the CNN wrote, quote, the sum not only shatters fundraising records for a Senate race in South Carolina, but for any Senate race anywhere, eclipsing the previous record for one quarter of $38 million set by Texas Democrat Betty O'Rourke in 2018. So he's, he's already collected more than $20 million. Apparently, of course, he's spending like crazy in South Carolina. And just to put it into perspective a little bit more, just to contextualize how much the amount is. So this quote, uh, this tweet, sorry, put out by Reed Wilson. He's a reporter for The Hill. He quoted that Jamie Harrison's $57 million quarter in context. That's as much as Lindsey Graham had raised in his entire Senate career through June 30th. So in 2002, he raised $8 million. Six years later, in 2008, a $10 million was enough for him to win. Again, in 2014, $11 million was enough for him to win. And finally, this year, he's raised $30 million, which is pretty much as much as the past three races put together. But that only totals to $57.6 million which is only what Jamie Harrison has raised in the last quarter, in the third quarter. So he raised more money before that. But that's just how much he's raised. So just a little bit about the challenger, Jamie Harrison. I didn't know uh, much about him before hearing this, the shocking amount of money that he has, uh, he has gathered. So this is how the New York Times referred to him, the surprisingly competitive Democratic challenger. So it's just a funny way of <laughs> that <laughs> New York no, Times. Because, uh, it's, uh, it's South Carolina. That's yeah, no, it is surprisingly competitive Democratic challenger. <laughs> it's just a funny thing <laughs> to say. And then so he was the chair of the South Carolina Democratic Party from 2013 to 2017. So an establishment figure through and through. He's significantly younger than Graham. He was only born in 1976. Apparently, his main issues are Medicaid and COVID-19 relief. So typical Democrat um, issues and talking points right now. And he also supports marijuana legalization. Now, if that's just something on his website or if he's actually going to work on that, I doubt it. And then he so there's this other aspect to it is that he lost his aunt to COVID-19 and has campaigned almost entirely virtually throughout this time. And his last debate with Graham, which was supposed to be held this Thursday, so just a few days ago, it got canceled because Lindsey Graham didn't want to take a COVID-19 test. So instead, they kind of did the same thing that the U.S. presidential debates did on Thursday, which is just to hold separate town halls. So now who is going to win once again? As I mentioned, Graham, uh, Lindsey Graham is still leading in the polls and as much as this Democratic challenger, his I'm sure his ideas, his ideologies are quite far from what I personally like and I would want someone to go for. But I mean, there wouldn't be anything sweeter than to see Lindsey Graham go down. I mean, not only is he like a despicable person, but on top of that, I mean, I think it would be a big win for the Democrats, at least if they take out Lindsey Graham. He, to my eyes, he's kind of been the star player of the Republicans in the Senate and or between the Senate and the Congress. I mean, one reason is because he has no problem in changing, you know, his allegiances. Let's not forget he was super anti-Trump before Trump got elected. And then he was like his biggest cheerleader in Senate. So it would just be it would feel so good to see this guy lose. So I'm definitely cheering for Jamie Harrison. 
But Sam, so if you have anything to add about this story, please do. If not, I want to ask you about your favorite, fondest memory about of Lindsey Graham. So many to pick. But um, to be honest, no, I don't really have any take except to say that, yeah, it's been ex- the campaign financing has been growing exponentially and it's been getting to crazy amounts, especially in the Trump era. And to be honest, we criticize the corporate Democrats and all that a lot. But uh, they do, in terms of, if you look at it from their position, in terms of organizational position, they are there to raise money, to get money. And it seems Trump mongering, or, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, a scaremongering, what I call a scaremongering, or exaggerating Trump's flaws, just like Republicans did with Obama, you know, exaggerating him into like a communist or whatever, uh, seems to be the best way to raise money. And uh, he, Jamie Harrison, seemed to have benefited from that, while Lindsey Graham has uh, is suffering a bit from his damaged reputation because of his change in direction, shall we say. He, he has gone from a... Ex- I mean, he has always changed his positions very... F- he, he's been he's been a pretty establishment figure from 1990s but then jumped on the radical tea party bandwagon then jumped on the trump bandwagon so it's not the thing for him i do find him i always find him so fascinating because um it's uh, i don't know have you ever read or seen uh, gone with the wind um it rings a bell but i don't remember it too well well, it's a legendary book and a movie with Clark Gable. When I was very young, my uh, like we had the book and then we used to watch the movie a lot. And then there is this character, like th- th- his accent is li- is like a is like a comedian trying to do a joke version of a southern. The only mm-hmm. other place I've heard this accent is Tarantino's Django Unchained, that you have this exaggerated. Like Saturn charm, oh my yeah. dear, yeah, my, oh I will not do that, you my honor, and it's so weird. I, I find him fascinating that people like him still exist, <laughs> uh, and it's just, uh, what's my favorite moment right now that comes to mind is his flip flopping on the judging thing, because it's so recent that in, in the Merrick Garland case with Obama. He was saying, no, I would not do that if it was a Republican candidate. No, I would. Oh, my dear, no way. And then, like, three years later, it's not even a decade. And he's like, yeah, no, we are going to, you know, confirm Amy Coney Barrett. It's going to go through. So, shh. I exactly, would say, right? I, I they were in the exact yeah. same situation just on the other side four years no, ago. This is actually, this yeah. is this Mary Garland thing happened, like, nine months before Obama's presidency. True, it was that far away. Wow, I thought it was closer towards the end of his second term. Technically, uh, Obama wasn't yet a lame duck president, even. Like, usually it's six months before. I don't know when it technically they refer to him as a lame duck. So, yeah, it it was far uh, a longer period than Amy Coney Barrett case. And but I would say uh, I do despise Mitch McConnell far more. Mm. Just Mitch McConnell, I don't know why. Maybe because of his slow uh, delivery or something. Just I mean, they're all awful. There's no difference between them. They all work for the same corporation. But uh, you know, Lockheed Martin. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's he's. I find Lindsey Graham very funny. Like he genuinely is like a character, kind of like Boris Johnson and Trump in a way. They are, it's like you don't see that in real life. Like nobody is like that anymore. It's no, I know weird. exactly what you mean. Yeah, or maybe not not around here anyway. Maybe in South Carolina, it's a bit yeah. different. <laughs> no, no, for sure, for sure, for sure. Okay, so that was just a little bit on a very interesting tight race going on in South Carolina. I mean. I mean, it's actually unclear how tight it is. The main story is that there's so much money, but the polls apparently are showing that Lindsey Graham is still winning. 
And they haven't had a Democrat a, senator in, in decades, apparently. If a or Democrat they, has a, even a slight chance in South Carolina, yeah. uh, it's a very highly... It has a lot of military people there, a lot of old people there. So, you know, tends to lean yeah. conservative. Oh, a lot for of sure. I, I heard a few things that were talking about some demographic changes, like in the suburbs, they're getting a lot of like support for Democrat partner. and apparently, but also not just, but also from women, there was some stat, oh, I can't remember right. exactly, so, but Biden yeah. got like most of the votes um, when it came to women in South Carolina, some of this, I wasn't too sure. So there were like a few factors here explaining perhaps some of the changes here. 